Well, in case this is your first time joining me or tuning in, which I can see some of you are brand new, I am Stephanie Laska. I know you've seen my face before, but you may not have heard me talk. Um, and I have lost 140 pounds and I've kept it off now for eight years. That is amazing, in my opinion, because I have struggled with my weight my entire life. I have been overweight since second grade. I've been on diets from my mom and my grandmother and made to feel ashamed about my size forever. So this topic is important to me. We're going to talk today about fats and this might be the first time I tell you we're not going to be doing any fat shaming and it's not about fat being overweight fat. We're going to talk about eating fat because when I was young at Weight Watchers or my grandmother's house or just watching TV, everybody talked about fat being terrible for you, right? Like raise your hand if that was true at your house. Did anyone tell you when you were little, like fat is horrible, fat shaming, you know, and I'm talking about dietary fat here. They were like, fat is bad for you. It's so caloric. It's, you know, going to clog your cholesterol, your heart. I don't know. People just said all sorts of stuff when I was coming up. And to this day, even though I'm eating this way on Dirty Lazy Keto, you know, sometimes I catch myself like, should I be dipping my artichoke leaf in a little um, bowl of mayonnaise? Like it feels kind of wrong. I don't know. Am I alone? Or are some of you maybe from the 1980s, like my era, where we were told fat is so bad. In fact, I got this letter from a listener, from a reader, and I can say her first name is Donna. Bless her heart. It's the sweetest letter, and it made me cry, I have to tell you. And she wrote that she's 71 years old and that she's been the poster child for yo-yo dieting. And she's having really good success, okay, on Dirty Lazy Keto, which is fabulous. But one of the things she wrote me about is she said, so many of us have lived through the low-fat, old way of dieting and eating. And it's so freeing to be able to have the good stuff and still be reducing in size. She's talking about her weight. And she says, so many of us old girls are not even aware of this phenomenon. And in my circle of friends, they think I'm weird. <laughs> I'm with you, Donna. That happens to me too. And she wrote, this is the part that made me cry. Donna said, I just think about how it would have been to have had an armful of dirty, lazy keto strategies when I was a young woman and how my life might have been different. Something to think about. And she says, keep on doing what you're doing. You don't have to be perfect to be successful. And she urges me to do a whole video on fat because for her, she was brought up to think it was so horrible. So I know I'm not alone. It doesn't matter if you're 71 like Donna or you know my age, which will remain secret. <laughs> I think a lot of us were brought up to be you know, confused about the role of fat and, and a lot of that fat shaming. Um, so the truth is, though, fat is more caloric. It is more calorie dense um, when compared to carbs or protein. So carbs and protein are four calories per gram. Um, but when you're looking at a fat, um, fat is actually nine calories per gram. And I'm talking about like foods that you eat. You can see gram. That's what that means. So it's like almost double. So you can see why maybe in the old way of thinking people thought we should stay away from it right because that was back when we thought calories were bad um well let's let go of that old way of thinking okay let's free ourselves from that because fat is so important fat should not be something that we're shaming fat is good okay and i want to just tell you three reasons why it's good and then we're going to go on to maybe talking about some more advice about how to eat more fats in your diet, the right kinds of fats. And I'll show you show and tell. I've got two buckets ready. Okay. So why fat is good. So obviously if you're eating a diet high in fat, I know all of you guys know this because I'm dirty, lazy keto. That means it's going to put you into a state of ketosis and ketosis essentially means your body is being fueled by fat. And that's different from being fueled by carbs. Totally different. We want to be in ketosis, right? That's like the whole beautiful part of this way of eating is that being ketosis, you're burning fat. That's how you lose weight. Simple. 
So eating a lot of fat equals ketosis equals weight loss. Like put it real simply like that. Physically though, I think there's more at play than just ketosis. And this is my second reason why I think fat is good. When you eat fat, for me anyway, tell me how it affects you, but for me, it's very satiating. And I know that's like a fancy word, but for me, that word means it tastes good. So I feel happy when I eat something with fat on it. Like it makes me feel satisfied. I feel full or just like happy. I can't explain it. Um, I think when I eat a meal that was cooked with fats, at the end of the meal, I feel full. I feel like, huh, that was a great dinner or that was a super lunch. Um, it's like I have egg salad on some lettuce, but the eggs mixed with the mayonnaise, that's a higher fat type of a salad on my lettuce. I feel really great and like satisfied. I'm not craving more food. I'm not feeling like, oh man, I'm still hungry. Um, but on the flip side of that, emotionally, and this is what other, I think, ways of eating don't address. Emotionally, when you eat fat, you feel, at least I do, I feel kind of like, like scandalous. Like I feel like I'm getting away with murder. Okay. I know that sounds crazy, but for me, that's important because in the past I've quit so many diets or ways of eating because I couldn't stick with it. I was angry. I felt resentful, but with dirty, lazy keto, this is why I created this eating fat, like putting tons of ranch dressing on my salad or, you know, eating broccoli with cheese on it. Like at the end of that, I'm all, ha ha, you know, like I kind of want to go like nanny, nanny, boo boo to the women in my life who fat shamed me as a child and told me that I was doing things the wrong way. So for me, that's important. I want to feel like I am getting away with the murder, that I am being a little bit scandalous, that I'm living on the edge. I want to feel like I'm enjoying rich foods that taste good. And I like putting myself in ketosis. I feel like I can eat more food. I don't have to worry so much about like calories and all that because I know in ketosis, I can eat more and I'm not going to gain weight. In fact, I'll likely lose weight. So that aside, that's my advice about letting go of the old way of thinking. Um, that's my advice about why I think fat is good. And then I want to move on to just some general advice about fats in general. And that's where we're going to have our show and tell because I have two buckets getting them all teed up. So here's the thing about fat and dirty, lazy keto. I think when people are new, they say, okay, how much fat do I have to eat today? What's my goal? What's my grams? What's my ratios? It's, it's a very common question when new people join this group or this way of eating. And I, first of all, say back to them, A, I doubt you read any of my books because I address that all over the place. You do not need to hit a fat goal with dirty, lazy keto. There, there is no magic number. There is no ratio. There's no calculator. I'm not going to tell you, oh, plug in your height and your weight, and then boom, here's this magic prescription that applies to you, and you're magically going to lose weight if you do exactly this. That's the opposite of dirty, lazy keto. That is strict keto. Yes, this is keto. And yes, you are going to eat more fat than you've probably ever eaten before. But it's done so in a way where you're not calculating and adding and subtracting and doing little math ratios. That is strict keto. And this is lazy keto. So I want you to try to let go of that notion about what your goals are or your ratios that you have to do. Because there is no have to do anything here. This is more flexible. So, okay, you're trying to nod along like, okay, all right, that makes sense. So what do I eat, <laughs> right? Because you know, that's a little confusing. Not everybody can handle it being all loosey-goosey like that. So here's the advice I want to give you. It's pretty simple. Eat fat at every meal. I know you're all, what? <laughs> like, I know that's not specific enough for some people, but this is the whole point of developing a lifestyle that you can sustain that will help you lose weight and keep it off forever is you've got to learn some of these skills and how it adapts to you and your body 
You've got to figure that part out. I can't do it for you. I want you to try to eat fat at every meal and see what that feels like. Take note. How much fat did you need to eat to feel emotionally satisfied, to make your food taste good, um, to feel full, to feel like you're not missing out? How much for you did that take? Keep those like amounts in your brain so the next time you go to have green beans, you know kind of how much butter to put on them. Does that make sense? Number three, use fat to make healthy food taste better. Now I hinted at that just now when I mentioned putting like butter on green beans or you know, maybe cooking Brussels sprouts in coconut oil. Um, but I'm serious about this. I think that too often in keto, people go down this dark path of like, fat bombs, I want to eat fat bombs, that's delicious. Of course it is. Eating butter mixed with like a fake sugar and vanilla and cocoa powder, that's going to taste great. That's true. However, there's not a lot of fiber and nutrition going on there. I know, I'm all nanny nanny boo boo, Stephanie's talking about damn vegetables again. But it's true, if you use your fat at every meal to eat vegetables and make vegetables taste better, that's gonna have the fiber you need to also fill you up. So the fat will be satiating, the fat will make the food taste better for all the, of those of you that maybe don't like vegetables. It will help you a lot. Um, but then you'll feel full, you'll feel satisfied, and then your stomach is all full of like healthy greens, and then you're not eating, you know, a bunch of like pork rinds later. Okay? So what I want you to start thinking about is how you can use fats at every meal and snack, obviously, to make healthy food taste better. So if you're eating fat just to eat fat, like a little alarm bell should go off. Oop. Knocking stuff over like a... Like, just be aware of it. I mean, it's not something that you can't do or never can do for the rest of your life. Um, I certainly do it once in a while, but it's not like that's what this is all about. I'm more focused on using the fat, like putting cheese on a cauliflower pizza crust. That makes the cauliflower taste better. Now, I'm not saying you have to love all vegetables and you have to be perfect. No one's saying that. If you like two vegetables, if you like five, start with that. Use fat to make healthy food, like those vegetables, taste better, and you'll start to realize you're losing weight. That's super motivating. Then you start getting more and more motivated, like, holy, holy moly, this worked. Okay, I'm getting tired of eating, you know, green beans. I've been eating that for days and days. Maybe I'm going to expand my world and tomorrow have eggplant. Never had an eggplant. Don't know what to do with an eggplant, but damn it, this is working. So I'm going to listen to Stephanie and I'm going to try to make an eggplant lasagna. You see where I'm going with this? I think the fat will make your food taste better. Emotionally, you'll feel more satisfied. And I think you'll suddenly find yourself more motivated to try new foods and maybe try some new recipes. That's good. That's what Dirty Lazy Keto is all about. It's a lifestyle that you can actually maintain that's healthy for your heart and healthy for your body because you're eating great foods. See what I'm going with this? That's how I've been able to keep this off for eight years. It's the truth. It's that simple. It does not have to be complicated, you know, with your like calculator and your how many on carb manager and my height and my weight. No, just put all that down and start to trust yourself. And no one's probably ever asked you to do that before. And that's why it feels scary. And a lot of people were like, what does that mean? Tell me exactly. It's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. That being said, I mentioned don't eat fat just to, uh, you know, because it tastes good. Things like pork rinds, cheese. Um, yes, they taste good. Ice cream. Those foods taste great, just like any kind of junk food would. But if you're packing on just eating those kinds of foods all day or relying heavily on them for snacks, I think you'll find that you'll start to gain weight. It's true. Those foods are not meant to be enjoyed like as a meal. You know, eating a whole bag of pork rinds, you know, I keep talking about that, for example. If you're eating a whole bag of pork rinds because they're high in fat and then you're you know making guacamole and then you're having a whole bag of pork rinds with guacamole that tastes great no one's going to deny you that however you've not eaten a lot of vegetables there so you're probably still going to be hungry you might even feel a little sick that would not be an example of the quote-unquote recommended way to eat 
So that being said, I know I kind of threw a lot at you and it's overwhelming. You can always rewind the video and start over again. I want to go through some foods of recommended fats on dirty, lazy keto. Because I think that's another question I often hear from people is um, they'll say, how do I get fats in my diet? And I know people get angry at that. They're like, what is, what's wrong with her? How can you? How is that a question? Like everyone loves to eat fat. But it's true though. If you haven't been used to eating fat in your diet, you have no clue, A, what a fat is, B, what a healthy fat is, and then C, how to incorporate it throughout the day. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, and then maybe some recommendations about what fats to lean into and other fats to be more cautious with. Because <laughs> not all fats are, are built the same, right? And I hinted at that. Okay, so let's go through the healthy ones that I totally recommend. And they're all good. I think it depends on your budget, your lifestyle. Um, I'm not going to be telling you, oh, you have to go to the organic section and you have to spend a million dollars on all this ingredients. No, I don't think so. You know, I started off by talking about avocados. If you don't like avocados, then don't eat them. I personally have learned to like them and I make all sorts of fun things with them like um, chocolate milkshakes and um, I can make brownies with them. I mean, come on. Everybody can learn to love those foods, right? It doesn't have to just be guacamole. You know, you say cooking oil. It could be as simple as Crisco. <gasps> oh, the keto police are going to call me today. They're going to be like, Stephanie's recommending Crisco. She's evil. You know, whatever. At your house, you do what you want, but don't make other people feel bad about the lifestyle choices they're making. If you're having vegetable oil or sesame oil, olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil, did I say that one? Whether it's pressed or virgin or whatever, you do you. This is your life. Don't let other people make you feel bad about what you grocery shop for when it comes to cooking oils. I think cooking oils are a great way for you to make your vegetables taste better. Throw on a gang of salt, your money. You can roast them, fry them, pan fry them, saute them, air fry them, whatever. Toss your vegetables in some oil with some salt. I guarantee you, you are going to find vegetables you suddenly like. It's true. One of my favorites is coconut oil. I use this to coat Brussels sprouts. Holy moly, it's the best thing in the entire world. You must try it. And it's cheap. All these oils are available everywhere. You know, I mentioned eggs earlier. Everyone's got eggs. Doesn't matter where you shop. I know these are organic, but they were on sale at Grocery Outlet. They were cheaper than regular eggs, so don't, don't think I'm saying you have to be organic. Um, eggs have tons of fat in them, and they taste great, and they're healthy. They also have protein, right? What about things like coconut milk, whether it's canned or fresh? Coconut milk is high in fat. Tastes yummy. Use that to make like a curry, maybe. That would be good. Or in your coffee. I like mayonnaise. <laughs> Do not judge. I love mayonnaise. Love it, love it, love it. I put it on everything. I make a ton of salads. I make salad dressings, I make dips, I use um, artichoke leaves and dip it in there, I mentioned that earlier. I make a lot of coleslaw, mix it with Splenda. Seriously, vinegar, it's delicious. And it's always available, you can even get it at fast food restaurants. What about nuts? Nuts are um, very high in fat. Now they're also caloric and kind of easy to overdo, so you have to know you, okay? I do recommend using fats, like we said, to make healthy food taste better. So eating nuts for me alone, it's like a slippery slope, if you know what I mean. I could eat like 12 pounds of walnuts in one sitting because they're so delicious. So I try to do something else instead where like, for example, seeds, which are also nuts and seeds are very easy to overdo. I'll use things like chia seeds to make um, chia seed pudding. Um, which is like a cereal that I recommend in the Dirty Lazy Keto Cookbook. I think I call it Bugga Cereal because it looks like Buggas. <laughs> the recipes in this book here. And sunflower seeds, also delicious. I use these to top salads. 
and that way you, you're quote unquote getting your fats in, but you're making a salad taste better. I put this on top of coleslaw, which is fantastic, um, with some mayonnaise, with vinegar, um, with some red onion. It's one of my favorites. I call that the lawn clipping salad that's also in the first cookbook. Pumpkin seeds are a delicious snack. You know, eating fats alone, like I said, are easy to overdo. I don't know about you guys, but this is a serving size of a quarter cup for pumpkin seeds. I could eat like, I don't know, three cups of these. That would be quite a bit. That would be 12 servings. I could do this at a movie theater and eat it all. So I have to be careful. I have to pre-portion the amount. Whenever I have nuts and seeds, I use a shot glass. And then I pour it on top of vegetables in some way. That way it slows my roll. A lot of you love everything but the bagel seasoning with poppy seeds and sesame seeds. There's onion, all sorts of sea salt in here. Um, I put this on broccoli and all sorts of vegetables. On avocado, it's to die for. Um, it's high in fat, right? Because you have seeds in here. And if you want to buy this at Walmart or Trader Joe's, you can do that. Also know that I have the secret recipe. I share it so you can make your own like me. It's in the Dirty Lazy Keto Dirt Cheap Cookbook. I make this by the vat. That's probably not a technical term, but I literally have like a container <laughs> like this big of everything but the bagel seasoning because I was buying these like twice a week and they're kind of expensive. So finally I just ordered all the ingredients online in bulk and I just refill them the same ones. It's a lot more cost effective. Plus, you know, it's delicious. And it's not just nuts and seeds that contain fat. Um, what about meats? Like these are frozen sausages. Your sausages are going to have more fat in them. So use these to make healthy food taste better. If you're just eating sausage all day, you're gonna feel sick. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. Use this and mix it with like, let's say a fajita mix, like bell peppers chopped up. Um, put it over lettuce and make a salad. You see what I'm saying? You're combining the, the higher fat foods with more vegetables that has more filler to keep you full and satisfied. But the fat will trick your brain into thinking, oh, everything's great. And meanwhile, you've just eaten a bunch of vegetables. Sneaky, right? I have to show you this one. Salmon, of course, is going to be a great source of healthy fat. It's frozen. I better finish up the podcast and put this back in the freezer. And chorizo is another meat. Um, you can buy this pork chorizo. This is vegetarian chorizo. I use this as soup starters quite a bit. And it tastes delicious, but it's super oily. I keep that in mind, though, so I add this to soups with a lot of veggies. My kids love pepperoni and salami, um, any of the oily meats. Enjoy these, but use them like I'm recommending. You know, pair them with like maybe some cream cheese and some sliced cucumbers. You know, make a roll up, some diced tomato, make like little sandwiches, lettuce. That way you're getting spinach, however you can to, to sneak these into more healthy food. Of course, bacon. Should have started with that one, right? Bacon's always a favorite. Macadamia nuts, another great low carb option. We talked about walnuts already. And my all time favorite, salad dressing. I like uh, blue cheese, Caesar, or ranch, of course. So those are all, for me, really easy fats that you can use to make healthy food taste better. I don't really have a trouble with any of those, except for maybe the nuts, I think are easy to overdo. Uh, some of these other fats, though, I think you have to really watch yourself. Like yogurt, the full fat yogurt. It tastes like ice cream to me. Also cottage cheese, maybe not as much, but cottage cheese is full fat. Ice cream, obviously. Hello, we could eat that all day. Or half and half. Easy, easy, easy to overdo. Let's not forget about my evil nemesis, heavy whipping cream, which we all know how I feel about that. I talk about that in the book constantly. Uh, sour cream, so easy to just eat by the truckload. Um, instead of doing that, though, think of ways that you can enjoy sour cream, like on top of fajitas, right? We talked about that. 
um, fajita meat with bell peppers and then sour cream and you're good um, a lot of folks like MCT oil I am NOT a fan but if that's something you're into that is a fat cream cheese of course you could eat this all day these are ones to watch out for you guys they're still fats but ones to be careful of um, here's another one that I have trouble with any kind of nut butter like peanut butter I don't care if it's sugar-free, regular-free, nut-free, whatever. I will eat like 12 gallons of it. So I have to be really careful about, even if I'm eating vegetables with them, like celery, celery and peanut butter, for me, it's just I'll go crazy and eat too much peanut butter. Hard cheeses, whether it's sliced cheese or shredded cheese, powdered cheese, any kind of cheese can be something that's super easy to overdo. And then last but not least, butter <laughs> everybody's got butter you get the butter you like you don't have to be fancy with Kerrygold get the butter your family likes and can afford um, but for me butter can be easy to overdo I can put a little bit too much on some of my vegetables but you have to do you so anyway I hope some of those ideas helped you I hope the messaging helped you really it's important to wrap your head around fats before you start diving in and then finding yourself gaining weight because all you're doing is eating ice cream and heavy whipping cream all day you don't want that you want to use those fats to make your healthy food taste better and that way dirty lazy keto is something you can do forever and you can do it easily too i just wanted to say thank you for listening i appreciate your support this is a community dirty lazy keto we have to help each other we're in this together, my friends. It's not easy, is it? We gotta support one another. So if you found today's video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and then subscribe to the Dirty Lazy Keto YouTube channel. Turn on your notifications so you'll never miss an update. You can also find me on Instagram at Dirty Lazy Keto. And for more information about any of my support groups or any of my books, you can always go to dirtylazyketo.com for more information. I'm here to support you. I'm here to help. I know you can do it.